Edward Kelly, hi, how's it going? Oh, uh, Kev, can you mind your, mind, mind your head? You can, oh, you can maybe just take, take it off for now. And uh, we'll see how we go. Yep. Uh, take a seat. You've really made it hard for me to uh, get in here, haven't you? Is it all right if I call you Ned? No. Okay. <laughs> no, just kidding. Mate, you can call me whatever you like. Uh, people like to call me larrikin, uh, top bloke, bush ranger, outlaw, hero. Uh, uh, some people also call you police murderer. But we'll, we'll come back to that one. Uh, for now, I'd like to start with learning a bit more about your family. Can you tell me about them? Oh, right. Yeah, my mum was tough as nails, I tell you that. She outlived me. Uh, my dad, he was an interesting fella. He's, everyone called him Red. Um, he was Irish. They were both Irish and uh, poor. Dad actually came here as a convict, landed in Tasmania, got done for stealing a few pigs. How did he get caught? Well, obviously, someone squealed. <laughs> it was a long time ago now, but I was born in Beveridge in Victoria, way back in uh, December. Yeah, it was December. Yeah, December 1854. I was one of eight kids. Mum and Dad had quite a few kids, so they kept them busy. <laughs> Look, I don't think they had it easy. No, Dad had a few run-ins with the police. He was an Irish Catholic ex-convict, so they had it out for him. Uh, you once, you once described the police as... A parcel of big, ugly, fat-necked, wombat-headed, fat-bellied, magpie-legged, narrow-hipped, splaw-footed sons of Irish bailiffs, or English landlords. Uh. Look, they were corrupt. They stole for themselves. Us, a whole bunch of others, we were poor farmers. But you see, these squatters, they would go and take big chunks of land and get rich off it. The British tried to make them share, but at the end of the day, they, they just paid out the police officers to come and harass us. You took on a lot of responsibility pretty early in life. When I was 12, uh, my father died. <laughs> Left just me, the eldest, to look after the family. You essentially became a bushranger. Well, as a teenager, you were a known accomplice of a very famous one, Harry Power and you were actually arrested a few times before one charge in particular stuck, and that sent you to jail for three years. Yeah, three years experience in Beechworth Pantridge's dungeons for receiving a stolen horse. But here's the kicker, I didn't know it was stolen, I just got it from me mate, so there you go. Was it my fault? In April 1878, a police officer tried to arrest your brother Dan for stealing horses. No, nah, mate, don't get me started. This whole thing is a fabrication. That Fitzpatrick fella reckons that I shot him. I didn't. He shot me? Yeah, I shot him. <laughs> well, they locked up my mum. Uh, they locked up a few other people who had nothing to do with it. It was really unfair, really unfair, and everyone knew it. So then you your brother and some of your friends went into hiding and eventually became known as the Kelly Gang. Uh, I just want you to, to take a, a quick look at this. Yes. 2,500 pounds. Murder of police. It was never meant to end like this. No, the police, they got a tip off that we were up at Stringy Bark Creek and well, the long and short of it is atrocious murder by bush rangers. Yeah, we shot three cops. From that point on, we were declared outlaws and it meant that uh, we could be taken dead or alive. Shot on sight pretty much, so uh, yeah, <laughs> months and months went on, but we uh, escaped the old popo. <laughs> Why were you never caught? Well, the short answer is the police just didn't know the countryside like we did. Have you seen Ned Kelly? Sorry, no, I haven't seen him. Um, we had a lot of people looking out for us, actually, people with their own struggles, and at the end of the day, they could see that we were fighting for them as well. You robbed banks. 
you took entire towns hostage. Ah, no, no, but yeah, most of them actually enjoyed that one. You see, we uh, burned mortgages and shared the loot with them. You went on to kill another man, Aaron Sherrod, who you suspected of being a police informant. Yeah, he was a police informant. Yeah, by now we knew that the police were after us, so we tried to draw them out, you see. Uh, we tried to take out the line at Glen Rowan, and uh, anyone that would be left alive, well, we would be there waiting for them. But someone tipped them off. But someone tipped them off. At Glen Rowan, you had this with you. I did. Looks pretty strong, useful, heavy. Is it easy to make? Easy to make. This. Easy to make. Mate, this is made out of old plows. Iron. Heavy iron. Do you think it's easy to make? Yeah, I was just sitting there with my hammer going bang, bang, bang. My brother walks in going, oh, that looks pretty difficult. Yeah, Dan, of course it looks difficult. It's 50 kilos of solid iron. So no, it, it wasn't easy. Could it withstand a bullet? Yeah, as many as you like. <laughs> Go on, get yourself a revolver, uh, give it a go. Uh, Neb, we, we don't have any, any firearms here. This is a, a television studio. You've got to give me I, a warning first. I appreciate the enthusiasm. Uh, it was at Glen Rowan in June of 1880 that you made your last stand. The rest of your gang was killed in the fighting, but you were wounded, captured, and later sentenced to death by hanging. Yeah. You know what? People rallied in the streets for me. Nobody wanted me dead. There, there was even a petition going around with like 32,000 signatures on it. They could see I was fighting for them, for the poor and against corruption. You were convicted of murder. Those things, by your own admission, did happen. Yes. And I paid the price on the 11th of November, 1818. After you died, there was a Royal Commission into the Victorian Police and their conduct during the Kelly outbreak. It exposed corruption and problems in the police force and led to some big changes in the way it operated. After all this time, you're still really famous, uh, both as a kind of underdog hero some people celebrate and also as a killer and outlaw others despise. What do you say to that? Well, such is life. Thanks, Ned. Nice. Appreciate your time. Likewise. Thanks for having me on. <laughs>